The way that I became a world-class elite athlete was that I was extremely conscious of this inhibition. I would visualize myself running on the side of the road. What's up, people? Welcome to the channel where I teach you how to turn your talents into employment. Today, what we're going to talk about is how you have to overcome your nervous system in order to become a super athlete. Now, I know about this because I did it. You probably don't know about this because it's not intuitive. And unless you accidentally stumble upon it, you'll probably never discover it unless you just watch my channel. Listen to me. So here we go. We'll jump right into it. What's going on is that in order for you to perform these super athletic tasks, which you need to do in order to be a pro level basketball player, you have to be risk taking all the time with your body, which is not something that your body wants to do, even if your mind does want to do it. So the best way to explain it is imagine right now you try to jump and put your head through the ceiling. Your mind is going to think, wow, that's really cool. And I want to do that. But your body is going to say, uh -uh, I'm not doing that. And you're going to try to jump and throw your head into the ceiling. But at the very last second, your body's going to tense up and try to duck and not put all your force through the ceiling because it knows it's going to hurt. Let's take another example. Imagine you go to try to punch a wall. You can think in your head how hard you're going to punch that wall. But when you go to do it, your body hesitates and you flinch and there's no way that you put all your force into that wall. Why? Because your nervous system is trying to protect you and it's not going to let you just go hurt yourself. It's not going to let you hurt yourself. And athletic movements at the highest level are so close to being dangerous and hurting yourself that the real inhibition stopping you from doing it is not your athletic ability, but your nervous system wanting to defend yourself. And what that means is that you have a lot more potential in you to be faster and to be stronger, to take harder hits, to give out harder hits, to make harder cuts. And mostly it's just to be more explosive. You have a lot more potential to do that, but your nervous system is pulling that punch at the last minute. So think about any movement that you go to do on the basketball court as like you're going to punch a wall and your body's like, uh, 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 don't go quite that fast. That's dangerous. Like you go to explode to try to dunk the basketball. Your body at the last second is like, I'm going to pull that punch. I'm not ready to exert that type of force. It's too dangerous. And the thing is, you're not really able to detect the difference between am I not athletic enough or is my nervous system pulling that punch? You can't detect that because you're young. You're not in tune with that process. And even if you are in tune with it, your body really tries to trick you to prevent you from getting you in a position where you hurt yourself. And the way I always like to think about this is your body's basically trying to protect you from breaking your ligaments, your tendons, straining your and tearing your muscles and breaking your own bones. But if it wasn't trying to protect you, then you could move so much faster. You could punch walls. You could jump and throw your head through the ceiling. But what would happen? Obviously, you would break bones in your hand. You know, you would move so explosively that you would tear muscles and it's dangerous. So look, the way that I became a world class elite athlete was that I was extremely conscious of this inhibition and I was constantly trying to fight it. See, you can go into the gym and try to move faster, but unless you overcome this inhibition in you, you're never going to move as fast as you can. So what I would do is this, I'm going to teach you right now. You got to do this. Uh, I would spend somewhere between, ooh, somewhere between 30 minutes and two hours a week doing this particular visualization. There were two of them that were primary. The first one is that anytime I would ride on a bus to school or in the car with my parents driving, while I was looking out the window, I would visualize myself running on the side of the road at breakneck speed, exactly as fast as the car is going. And it's actually difficult to imagine your legs going as fast as, you know, a 60 mile an hour car on the road because it's so quick that you almost can't even create an imaginary visual of it. And it takes you time to develop even the ability to visualize it. So developing the ability to see myself moving like at superhero speed. And I was doing that probably for about, like I said, 30 minutes a day. So, you know, in a week, you know, one week I might, I might do it two hours. 
Um, you know, I might do it uh, an hour one day, 30 minutes the next. It wasn't something that I would uh, like set out to do. It was just something that anytime I was in a car, I would try to do it. And I would see myself running on the side of the road. If there were obstacles in the way, I would see myself super quick jumping on the obstacle, then jumping down. If there was a road sign, I would see myself jumping over the road sign. And I would be running 50, 60 miles an hour, and I would try to get the visual so that my legs were turning fast enough that I was keeping up with the car. And I would really make it real. Like I would see myself, my body running like this in a basketball uniform, sometimes dribbling a basketball, just so unbelievably fast. And what I was trying to do was train my nervous system to understand that this is how I move. It's not dangerous. It's totally normal. I wanted to see myself like that, like with superhero speed. So the second one, this was even bigger than that one. I would try to visualize anytime I would walk by cars that the car, if it were to hit me, would actually break apart. Like, you know, in superhero movies, when Superman, he, he stops the car and the car like hits him and, and it crumbles around him. That's what I used to visualize. If I would walk by a bunch of cars, I would try to get angry. And I would try to think like, yeah, like come and get me. And if you come and get me, you're going to break when you hit me, when we collide. I would try to envision that collision because what you're trying to overcome is the normal visualization that you should have if you were to collide with a car, which is all my bones shatter and I am destroyed and I die and the car runs over me. It's like, I'm not even there. I'm like an ant. I'm a feather to the car. But I wanted to combat that visualization and really solidify it in my head and I believe when I was young, I really hypnotized myself in this fashion that there were times where I really believed, I really believed in my bones that if a car hit me, that this is what would happen, that the car would lose. The car, I don't care how fast it's going, it would lose. I don't care if it's a truck, I don't care how big it is. When you hit me, you will crumble, not me. And so I used to visualize that all the time. Like it was a daily occurrence for me, like a car is coming and I would try to muster a very particular feeling, a particular tone, a particular story of, oh, come and get me. And then it hits me and the car crumbles around me. And, you know, you can hear it in the way that I conjure this story up that, you know, this was sinking into my nervous system, into my subconscious. And what it did for me was that when I later would get on the court and guys would inevitably be coming towards me like they were going to hit me, I didn't have to think about how hard I'm going to hit them, or is this dangerous? Is this going to hurt? Should I brace for impact? Immediately, my response went to my trained visualization with cars hitting me, and I just thought, this guy's going to crumble when he hits me. And it put me in a state where I was always hitting somebody harder than they were hitting me. And the reason is this. If you are subconsciously afraid of the contact that you're about to engage in, then you're not going to meet the contact with more force. You're going to be trying to absorb it in an effort to reduce it. And because I was never afraid of contact, I was always increasing the level of contact. No matter how heavy the guy was, how big the guy was, how strong he was, how hard he's hit me in the past, I was always trying to increase the level of contact between us. And what it did was that nobody hit me without realizing immediately that whatever level they were coming at me at, I was raising it. And nobody, for that reason, nobody was hitting me twice. They'd hit me once thinking I was lighter than them, a smaller than them. I was, a, you know, a, some little bitch. And they learned in a heartbeat that that was not about to happen. And they didn't, wouldn't hit me again. <laughs> and listen, this is not something that you can talk yourself into in the moment. That's what I learned as well. Because, you know, trainers, when you're working out, they want to tell you with a few cues, a few verbal reps, you hit harder, you know, be tougher, be stronger. But that doesn't sink deep down into your bones. You got to get these repetitions with visualization. And so those two visualizations were, were the ones that I used to raise my ability to take contact and to give out contact and to raise my ability to move as fast as I possibly could without being afraid that I was going to break my bones, tear my muscles, do damage to my body. That was how I overcame the inhibitions that my nervous system put in place. And probably the biggest one was with jumping. See, after I started doing this, I started being able to jump 
and really like smash my head into the ceiling in a way that used to like borderline injure me. I'm not telling you to do this, but this is what I used to do. And I realized that my visualizations were allowing me to create much more contact, much more force in the world with my explosive movements that I was no longer afraid of because I was visualizing it in between my workouts. See, your workouts are gonna hurt. Like there's gonna be pain when you try to do explosive movements. When your body hits the floor and you gotta spring up, like it hurts when you're doing it at maximum effort. And so if the only conditioning that you're getting is that pain in your workout, your nervous system is gonna slowly start to realize hey, being athletic is painful. So I don't really wanna be that athletic because it hurts, it always hurts. And so you have to overcome that in the space in between your workouts with these visualizations that you have to make every bit as real as real life so that your, your nervous system actually starts to think, hey, being explosive doesn't hurt. Like being explosive is effortless, it's easy. There's no pain involved, it's fun. Um, I can even move faster, I can move faster, I can move faster, no, I can do it faster. I can hit harder, I can hit something bigger, something bigger can hit me, I don't care. Like, you need those repetitions as much as you need repetitions of, oh, hit your coach with the pad. You know, like that stuff is, it's only gonna get you so far. Like, you know, 100 repetitions of that in a week, it's only gonna instill in you enough thirst for contact that it's just not gonna go where you need it to go. You need these visualizations. and. Um, so that's something that you should start working on right now. You know, when you're in your car, put down your cell phone, look out the window, notice your car is going 40 miles an hour and try to visualize yourself running on the side of the road, dodging obstacles, jumping over rocks, jumping over bushes, running on top of the building and then jumping down, running 40 miles an hour and then turning around and running 40 miles an hour backwards and just have fun with that visualization. And then cars come, they hit your body and just break apart because you're so strong and so able to take contact. And this needs to eventually become like your default belief system, like your belief system that you are confused about what's real and what's not. And you genuinely think like, wait a second, like if a car hits me, is it going to break apart? Like it might. I don't know, cars never hit me, but I've seen that situation like a hundred thousand times. I've seen it in my mind and every time the car breaks apart. So I don't know the difference, what's real and what's not. Like, I think I can run 60 miles an hour because I've been seeing that movie play out hours and hours every week for the last three years. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm the fastest person in the whole world. You know, for me, there were times in my career for like stretches of years where like I really believed like, wait a second, I'm the fastest person in the, on the planet. Like I am, I've seen it. I've seen myself running 70 miles an hour. I'm the fastest man in the world. Uh, I'm the strongest man in the world. Like there's nobody that can hit me and move me. And look, obviously I'm 35 now. Obviously I know that this was not true, but it's tricking yourself and having a real genuine effect on your belief system and on your nervous system that allows you to become this world-class athlete, this world-class speed, <laughs> a person with world-class speed, this person with world-class ability to take and make contact. Like I remember I once joined a team where one of the, the centers on our team was the biggest player in the world, like in the world, legitimately. He weighed 200 kilos, which is, I think he weighed 400 pounds. He was one of the most athletic people in the world. He was humongous. And this guy used to charge at me, like he charged at everybody else and I wouldn't move. And I would stand there and hit him as hard as I could when he came at me. And he learned real fast, do not come at Joe Alexander because he's going to hit you even harder than you hit him. He's going to raise the level of, and, and he told me, he was like, I've never had somebody ever in my life stand there and try to take hits from me. And I didn't tell him, but the re I'm telling you, the reason is because I had been taking hits from cars and trucks for the last 10 years for an hour, two hours every week. That's a hundred hours a year. And for me, like seeing him coming at me, I was like, dude, I've been taking hits from trucks for 10 years. Like you're nothing. And, and he felt it, you know, it wasn't like something fake. It wasn't like I just stood there and he ran me over. It was like, I wasn't moving. And it was because of these visualizations that I'm telling you, 
You know, I wouldn't tell you if this was something fake and I was putting you in a position to get yourself hurt. This is going to put you in a position where you inflict pain on people that think they're about to run you over. And you're going to see the change in their eyes the next time they start coming at you because they're going to divert course. It's going to be a case of they come at people, but not at you. You become that one guy on the team of he's off limits. I don't come at him. I can hit anybody else as hard as I want, but not him. He's different. And that's the same sort of um, risk, risk thirsty mentality that is what allowed me to develop a 40 inch vertical. It's what allowed me to develop the, one of the fastest sprint times in NBA history. That's what allowed me to go out and train like such a maniac was because I was not afraid to break bones, to tear muscles. I really believed that trucks hitting me would bounce off. I believed I could run 60 miles an hour without it affecting me. These visualizations, they worked. They worked. So get on it, my people. And with that said, I wish you all the luck in the world. 